Hi everybody, I hope you are all well. It is just come out to four o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Um, I've been around at mum and dad's uh, for the afternoon, um, had a lovely lunch with them, and I finished the book I have been reading this week. It's been a bit of a weird reading week for me because Monday through to Thursday, I just, I really didn't want to read. Um, I just had this kind of blocker as it were in my head where I'm like no I'm I'm not in the mood but I was having a bit of an odd week this week I wasn't feeling too good um because my, my issues with endometriosis was just being annoying uh and uh, <laughs> because of that I wasn't really in the mood so I've been watching Netflix I've got through series three of American Horror Story which I liked and I'm going to move on to series four um so series three is Coven series four is Freak Show and I'm going to be starting that tomorrow. Um, so yes, yeah, so Monday through Thursday, I just I wasn't interested at all in reading. Friday, I read a little bit, and then yesterday, I just read all day, and I finished off the book I've been reading this week earlier today. So here I am to talk about it, and that book is The Ice House by Minette Walters. It's the last Minette Walters book I have in my collection currently, and uh, this was actually her debut novel. So. In a way, I kind of went into it, obviously because of other books of hers that I'd read, I knew what to expect from her writing style and such. But at the same time, because this is a debut novel, I, I was kind of uh, thinking, okay, there could be some things that aren't quite what I'm used to be being a debut novel. It does happen. You have first um, novel um vibes from books from time to time for various authors a clear one who, who which i've mentioned quite often on this channel is cassandra clare her first mortal instruments book very much feels like a first novel and that is not a bad thing it just means that as i have gone through her books i can see the improvement in her writing um which is great to see so it's not a bad thing whatsoever and Although I would say this doesn't suffer from first book issues, at the same time it kind of does. Um, so in case you don't know what the Ice House uh, is about, it follows mainly a woman called Phoebe. Um, so Phoebe has lived in this village for quite a significant amount of her time of her life. And 10 years ago, her husband disappeared out of the blue. He was a reported missing until about four or five days after he went missing. And that was because of the neighbours reported him missing. His wife, Phoebe, didn't. And during that time, she had um, burnt his clothes. She had given away possessions. She had sold possessions. And she had kind of drained the bank account. Uh, well, his bank account, because he had a separate account. So the police were obviously very very interested in her and believe that she had killed her husband but they couldn't find any evidence to prove that they searched everywhere for her husband dug up the garden all sorts could not find him so for 10 years she's walked around this village with this label of being a possible murderer and now it's 10 years later she lives in the ha the house um that she lived with her husband uh called the grange and uh, she has two female companions who live with her, Diane and Anne. And they're just having a usual day when the gardener slash builder comes running to the house saying, I've just found a body. And it's within the ice house. Now, in case you don't know what an ice house is, it basically was in older buildings, especially, you know, Victorian, Edwardian, you know, special buildings that were, that were grander. Um, I had a separate building where ice was kept it was dug kind of further deeper underground and such because the temperature would mean that it would stay cooler which would be perfect for the ice and it's kind of like the big house as it were the rich house in the area would have that and there's a very if you've ever watched Cranford uh, there is a scene right in the very first episode where a man gets badly injured and they need ice and they run up a uh, little boy is sent to run up to the big house in the village in order to get ice from there to bring it down to the doctors so that he can use that to try and help save this man's arm. Um, so the body 
is within the ice house and of course police automatically believe it's Phoebe's husband but they come to the conclusion after various tests and such that this body hasn't been there for a long time and the last time anyone was in the ice house was about four years previously and there was no body so if this is the body of the husband that's been missing for 10 years how on earth did he get there and who is the body and the, the book follows this investigation so there's a lot going on as you can imagine in this book now going into it as i said because i knew minette walter's writings from other books i thought okay i'd be pretty safe with this it'd be not conventional um at all but the structure that I'm used to with her books let's put it that way um and in a way it was but at the same time it wasn't it's not a bad book whatsoever but I just feel like her later books when she's um developed structure in a I don't want to say in a better way um developed the way that she structures her novels um I think, yeah, I, I really feel her later books are better than this, but I didn't dislike it whatsoever. Now, one thing I want to flag, because I flagged this um, previously when I read uh, The Mermaid Singing by uh, Val McDermott, that there is language uh, towards the LGBTQ plus community, which is thrown at these three women constantly despite the fact that they have said multiple times that they are not part of their community that they are heterosexual and the fact that they've slept with like practically every all three of them practically every man in the village including the police who are investigating them they are still labeled certain derogatory terms which i'm not going to say here because i don't want to upset anyone or offend anyone um it was a bit like okay but she i get it what where they're coming from because there's three women three single women older women that live alone in this house Ooh, what could be going on behind closed doors i get that whole thing what i didn't like was that minette walters kept on referring to it over and over and over and over again i get it there's so many people in the village who believe that and every time one of them pop up they refer to that term and that it was like even the police who we are mainly following in this book who are investigating this crime um even after they know that these women are not part of the lgbtq plus community they still keep calling them that and it was just like why are you doing that um so i just wanted to let people know that if you do read this book there is some language in there that you might find offensive it is not as bad as val mcdermott's uh, the mermaid singing just as a comparison where i flagged up a, a trigger thing for that but i just wanted to let you guys know should you want to read it that there is some language in there that you might not necessarily agree with i didn't agree with it um but yeah, it was it was just the fact like, right, okay, I get it. Why do you keep on flogging this? It's just, do I need to keep reading that word over and over and over again? No. So what is the point? Um, I didn't like also that, okay, with the body, the fact that Phoebe's husband's been missing for 10 years and this body is at a state in which the body can't be really identified just to look at it um and of course the police automatically assume it must be phoebe's husband you're like right okay yeah i get that assumption right we're going to investigate that but then what the police do is that they do every single test and ask every single question possible before they go to dental records to try and figure out who this body is and I'm not kidding you, it took, it's a 412 page book and it took 300, about 90, about 390 pages for them to do the dental record test to find out who the person was. And I understand that it's, it's because of this whole thing of, is it the husband? And all of these questions about why he disappeared and could he have run away, da 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 da. 
but it's like it took you 390 pages to reveal that and it wasn't even that big of a cliff uh, you know a, a shocker moment as it were or a cliffhanger moment when they got the result at that point for me because I was a bit like I was actually getting to the point where I was counting pages and I'm like I should not be doing this and not knowing who this person is so then it meant that that last bit was a little bit rushed for me because I was like you know, this 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 is why I think her structuring of her stories and her later books where she's developed these things further is a lot stronger. They, not to say that this isn't a strong structure, it's just it could be there were tweaks that I think really should have been made to it. Um so it's a good starting block, but it needs to be developed. And the fact that Minette Walters, from her other books, as I said, has improved, and I can see that improvement, that is not a bad thing. It means that she's worked on her writing and everything uh, and has progressed as a writer, which is a great thing. Now, with characters and such, um, just as in her other books, I always feel that her, her characters are very... Um, they're strong and they're very much based in reality. This book, there were more men than women and the women were very much looked down upon for every single thing that they did. Whereas like, if I compare to like um, The School's Bridal, where we, our main character was the doctor of the village who was kind of caught up in a situation of, oh, could you have possibly murdered her or you know all this kind of stuff but she was a really strong character and I loved following her and the um male police inspector uh detective who was trying to understand the world of the village through her it made this great relationship um that they had which really really sat well in the story but then when you look at the ice house it's male um, policemen making really derogatory jokes about these three women um, in this house and these three women, too rightly, tell them to fuck off and, and won't, do, won't deal with them and such and they get frustrated and annoyed that all this information is being held back and such and it's like, well, you're standing there calling them these derogatory terms. What do you think they're going to react? You know, it's... It kind of felt like it needed a better balance, as it were, of the men to women in this book. But, but obviously, various different crime investigations, stuff like this does happen, where, you know, it's a male-led police investigator, them not necessarily believing women who are um, caught in the center of, of various crimes. So it is at the same time grounded in reality. It just meant that I got a bit frustrated at times with, with these guys investigating. And it's like, for the love of God, just look at that thing right there. Like I noticed something and I was practically scream in my mind, screaming at them going, would you just look at this thing that's right there and you can't see it. So thus, you know, in later books like The Skull's Bridal, where she used a woman who was able to see things that not necessarily the police investigators could see, meant that that balance was so much better. So overall the structure just needs cleaning up a bit and that balance needs to be rightened a bit um there was one one element which i didn't well i wouldn't say i found wrong but at the same time it was just a bit like mm, would that really happen one of the um policemen involved with the investigation starts having a love affair with one of the women who were suspect for murder and it was just a bit like, yeah, and your boss is okay with this? Just, would that happen? Would that happen? You know, I get why it happened, but at the same time, even at the end of the book, it was like, that's it? That's, that's what we're getting from that? Did that really need to happen? So, yeah. So, as you say, I liked the story. I liked the things that got revealed. I liked how we found out um, more about 
people involved and relationships in the village and everything and that there were dark secrets in this village um that you wouldn't think were there but they were there but at the same time it was just a bit like was that necessary and because of that um, like I said with the structuring and such I can't class it as a great Minette Walters book but it's a very, it is a strong story it's a strong book and for a debut novel I think that's great um it just didn't tick all the boxes for me so I'm going to do a quick reading for you and because once again whenever I do this I always mark pages as I go along and then I find that the pages I have marked to do a reading happen to give away various things or is a little teaser for something that's coming up which I didn't realise is a teaser until I get to this point where I do reading. So I'm going to read stuff from the first chapter for you. So Fred Phillips is running and Cottrell's remark burst upon the silence of the August afternoon like a fart in a vicar's tea party. Startled, her two companions looked up, Diana from her sketch pad and Phoebe from her gardening book, their eyes watering at this abrupt transition from printed page to brilliant sunlight. They had sat in content stillness for an hour, grouped about the raw iron table on the terrace of their house with a where the wreckage of a lazy tea jostled with the flotsam of their professional lives. A pair of secateurs, an open paint box, pages and manuscripts, one with a circular tea stain where Anna had dumped a cup without thinking. Phoebe was perched on the upright chair at right angles to the table, crossed ankles tucked neatly beneath her, red hair corkscrewing in flaming whirls about her shoulder. Her position had hardly changed for half an hour previously when she had finished her tea and guiltily buried her nose in her book instead of returning to the greenhouse to finish off a bulk of order of 500 ivy leaf cuttings. Diana, unashamedly glistened with ombre soleil, reclined on a sun lounger, the pleated skirt of her printed cotton dress spilling over the sides and brushing the flagstones. One elegant hand toyed with the underbelly of a Labrador lying beside her. The other drew swirling doodles in the margin of her sketch pad, which should have been filled, but was not, with commissioned designs for a cottage interior in Fowley. Anne, who had been struggling between intermittent doses of conjure up a thousand words on vaginal orgasm fact or fiction for an obscure magazine, was drawn up tight against the table, chin on hands, dark eyes staring down, the long vista, a landscape garden in front of her. Phoebe glanced at her, at her briefly, then turned to follow her gaze, peering over the spectacles across the wide expanse of lawn. Good Lord, she exclaimed. Her gardener, a man of massive proportions, was, put was pootling across the grass, naked to the waist, his huge belly lapping at his trousers like some monstrous tidal wave. The semi-nudity was surprisingly enough for Fred had held strong views about his position at Streets Grange. Among other things, he required Phoebe to whistle a warning of her approach in the garden so that he might clothe himself suitably for when he referred to as a as a parlez vu even in the heat of summer. Perhaps he's won the pools, suggested Diana, but without conviction as the three women watched his, his rapidly slowing advance. Highly unlikely, countered Anne, pushing her chair away from the table. Fred's iner inertia would demand a more powerful stimulus than filthy lurker would prompt his bout of activity. They watched the rest of Fred's approach in silence. He was walking by the time that he reached the terrace. He paused for a moment, le leaning one hand heavily on the low wall bordering the flagstones, catching his breath. There was a tinge of grey to the weather weathered cheeks, a rasp in his throat. Concerned, Phoebe gestured to Diana to pull forward a vacant chair and then she stood up, took Fred's arm and helped him into it. Whatever's happened? she asked anxiously. Oh, madam, something awful. He was sweating profusely, unable to get the words out quickly. Perspiration ran in streams over his fat brown breasts, soft and round like a woman's, and the smell was all pervading, consuming the sweat scent of roses, the sweet scent of roses, which nodded in beds at the edge of the terrace. 
Aware of this and of his nakedness, he wrung his hands in embarrassment. I'm so sorry, madam. Diana swung her legs off the lounger and sat up, twitching a rug off the back of her chair and placing it neatly across his shoulders. You should keep yourself warm after a run like that, Fred. He wrapped the rug around him, nodding in, in apprehension. What's happened, Fred? Phoebe asked again. I don't rightly know how to say it. She thought she saw compassion in his eyes. But it's got to be told. Well, then tell me, she promptly. She prompted gently. I'm sure it can't be that bad. She glanced at Benson, the yellow Labrador, still laying placidly by Diana's chair. Has Hedges been run over? He reached out a rough, mud-caked hand from between the folds of the rug and the familiarity that was quite out of character, placed it on hers and squeezed gently. The gesture was as brief as it was unexpected. There's a body in the old ice house, ma'am. There was a moment's silence. A body? echoed Phoebe. What sort of a body? Her voice was unemotional, steady. Anne flicked a glance in her direction. There were times, she thought, when her friend's composure frightened her. So there we go. So just give you a gist of kind of the flow and everything of it. Um, it starts, yeah, with these three women finding out that there's a body in the ice house and then the police turn up and then it's just full police investigation from that point. So, yeah, I, I did, in a way, I did expect more of it because I knew Minette's writing already. But I did bear in mind that this was a debut novel and not to say that every debut novel from every author is going to be in a way a letdown compared to later works. Seeing a progression of an author is really a wonderful thing to see when you're reading books um, and you know seeing how they develop things and such and for a kickoff, I think The Ice House is a really strong debut novel, a very, very good um, crime novel for a budding writer. And I'm really glad that over time she developed her skills and she, she produced some really great books. Um, so it's not going to deter me from, from her other books. It, it, in a way, it makes me even more, I have more of a hunger um, for, for her other books. Uh, it's just compared to what I've read early this year, it's not quite as good, um, but still, good, but still good overall. Now, back in 1996, I believe it was, uh, there was a TV drama done of it, just like the Scold's Bridal, which I had reviewed in the last Minette Walters um, read. Scold's Bridal. Um, unfortunately, really annoyingly, uh, somebody has uploaded the Ice House onto YouTube as you know the full drama, but it's been blocked in my country, so I can't watch it and I can't find it anywhere else whatsoever. So I can't review the drama The Ice House, but I would gather that given that it was around the same time that they did the Scold's Bridal, I would have thought that the drama is going to be much like that, where it's a little bit fluffier compared to what the book was, but overall okay. And that's just me assuming, having not seen any of the drama whatsoever. Um, but if you are able to, if you want to look it up, um, you know, you just search the Ice House, um, Manette Walters drama, um, or just the Ice House drama, I think it was that I searched, and it came right up near the top of the, right at the top of the um, search reviews oh sorry search results not search reviews um and yeah see if you can watch it in your country because i can't in mine unfortunately it's the way it is um but yeah if you want to check it out so those are my thoughts on the ice house by minette walters um so time to ask our questions or oh, my questions should i say would i read this again i think i would um probably I'm probably not not wanting to read it anytime soon, but if I found that for some reason I came across it and I had, I needed something to read, I wouldn't mind grabbing this. I think it was all right overall. Uh, would I read any more Minette Walters books? Well, yes, this hasn't deterred me at all from her other books. I have enjoyed other books of hers and this is the last Minette Walters book in my collection that I haven't read. So I need to invest in, and look into other works by her. Would I recommend this to anyone? 
I would, but I would recommend The Skull's Bridal as being better than this one and also flag up, um, as I said, that there is some uh, language about the LGBTQ plus community, which isn't that nice in this book, which is referred to quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I'd say give it a go, but be aware that The Skull's Bridal is better, in my opinion. <laughs> Oh, so those are my thoughts on The Ice House by Minette Waters. If you read this book, I'd love to know what you think. Leave me a comment in the comments box below. I mean, thumbs up, thumbs down. I tell it to you a bit. I'll let you decide. Sorry, I got a bit tongue tied there. And I'll be back with my thoughts on my next book, which is The Other Mrs. Walker by Mary Paulson Ellis. I've never read Mary's books before. I got this because my sister um, had bought it ages ago. I can't remember if she actually read it when she bought it I can't recall but she told me the the synopsis and I thought oh that's really intriguing I'm gonna get it so I got it um and now I'm going to read it so yeah see my thoughts on the other Mrs Walker is um and before I forget uh it looks like people liked my book tag video that I did last week so I think I might try a few more not right away because I've got stuff on this like week and such so um i'm probably not gonna get around to it for like a couple of weeks or something um but as soon as i'm able to i'll do another book tag video and i hope you guys will like that one so thank you for the response and the views on on that book tag uh video that i did all right then guys i will see you when i see you bye